And welcome back to School for Startups Radio again. Thank you so much for being with us today. I hope you enjoyed Jay and everything he's doing over there at Fresh Lime. I think it was some really great information. I am very excited to introduce you to my next guest now. His name is Doug Lehman, and he is a social media guru. He is a video marketing guru, and we're going to talk all about how we can increase our sales, get more responses by using the appropriate social video uh, tools that are out there. So I'm very excited to introduce you to Doug. You can learn more about him at DougLayman.net, and that's L-E-H-M-A-N. Doug, welcome to the show. How you doing today? I'm doing great, Jim. Thank you so much for reaching out to me. I've been listening to a lot of your shows and, and just excited to be here and, and talk about social media and leveraging video as a channel of choice for sales. Well, you know, I'm excited to learn more about that. I don't use video myself too much now. Uh, and I know I need to. So let's go through some of the process. Uh, I was talking with a guest yesterday and we pointed out that YouTube is now the second largest search engine. And I think it will probably hit number one one day because video is just cooler, better than anything else. The best medium for actually getting your message across. Don't you think? Oh, I totally agree with that. And obviously it's the second uh, largest search engine. It's owned by Google, which is the number one search engine. But, uh, you know, it's just a way of conveying a mess message. People, let's face it, people like to watch things. They like, we're visual learners, and the power of video to market your brand, whether it's in sales or to tell a story or have a customer do a testimonial for you through video, the, the possibilities for content with video are endless. Well, I totally agree, Doug. Uh, Let's talk then about video. What are some of the best practices? Uh, what about the quality? I noticed that your videos always look amazing. You've got great backgrounds, incredible words and stuff like that. You must have like a $40 million video set in your office. Well, I'm going to break it to you in layman's terms. I really don't have a $40 million uh, studio. In $50 million. Fact, $50 million. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So it's not the price is right. Uh, it's going the other direction. I actually am self-taught when it comes to video production. And I've worked video with using a cell phone or your iPad or a point-and-shoot camera because the technology now makes it an even playing field for people to do video. And devices now make it easier than ever to shoot high-def video. So some of the key points for you said about doing video would be, one, first of all, know what your message is and know who your intended audience is. You can do a great video, but if it doesn't resonate with your target audience, whether it's sales or you're trying to promote a book or whatever the case is, it doesn't matter how, how it looks. I mean, you got to be able to go to brass tacks and deliver the message through video, just like you would if you were writing or doing a, a radio interview. Do you use a green screen to film, Doug, and then superimpose backgrounds? Is that how you're doing it? Most of my work is green screen related. Uh, I started doing green screen work about three years ago. I've got two studios that I work out of, and I've got a portable green screen. So the short answer is yes, I, I use it for effect, and it, it, it has a lot of great um, ways to tell a story with graphics in the background. And with the green screen, you can be anywhere you want to be. You All right. can be in China, you can be on planet Mars or you can be in Atlanta at the Braves game. All right, well, you walk me through one of the videos that you do. So you film in front of a green screen. I believe you can buy a green screen for like 100 bucks or something like that. And what type of camera are you using? What software do you recommend? Uh, talk to us about the audio. How are you miking yourself? Will you work us through some of the actual basics so we can you know, get the same quality that you are one day? Sure, it, it's just, and you, you've hit a couple key points. You know, we can talk about different types of cameras. I shoot with a Canon T3i, or I sometimes shoot with my cell phone. But having that audio, so one thing you want to look for in a camera device, let's talk on audio, is the fact that you want to have a mic jack. Uh, nothing sounds worse than taking your cell phone and having wind outside and using an external microphone, so good audio having a mic jack and most cameras and cell phones have that ability now they all do cell phones 
a smartphone. It's smart. It has a, a mic jack to it. So one thing is, you know, get your audio done, and you can buy mics, you know, anywhere from 20 bucks to $1,000 microphones. But as long as you've got a mic and you're, you're using that, that helps. The second part really is lighting the subject, being able to make sure, and natural lighting works if you're outside, if you're not glaring right in the sun, that helps. So just well audio, well lighting um, are essential if, if, because if it's not a distraction, if it can actually do you more harm than good, you'll send a mixed message. So when you asked about cameras, I, I, I shoot with, you know, about a $500 camera, but I've also shot with my cell phone. And originally I used to shoot with a flip camera. And then what uh, software do you use to edit? I use, uh, originally I used Windows uh, Movie Maker, which is free on all Windows right. um, applications at one time. And I'm not sure about the, the latest and greatest Windows, but now I use Sony Vegas. But That's what I use. I use Sony Vegas a lot. I'm comfortable with that, but a lot of filmmakers use Final Cut Pro, uh, Premiere. It's just a question of taking the time. Really, the editing and the software is what really makes your video stand out. You talked about my videos having graphics and maybe lower thirds. That's all in the editing. As long as you light it correctly and have good audio, that's when you put the extra secret sauce on the video. That's where you put all the panage on it and make it stand out. All right, so let's uh, clean up a couple of things. The uh, Final Cut Pro is a several, several hundred dollar package, and it might be too advanced for most of our listeners. The Vegas software uh, that you mentioned is exactly what I use. I think it was like $79 or something. It's under 100 though, for sure, right? It is under 100 right now. And, and the thing I, I would recommend getting started if in video is, to, to use uh, some of the platforms that are for Mac, you've got iMovie Maker, you've got Windows Movie Maker for a Windows-based operating system. So I would recommend using the uh, the ones that have already come with the computer first, and then kind of dig in and get your get your reps in, and then then take it to the next level. But if you want to do compelling, simple video, you can just use a simple uh, platform. There's stuff that's online is actually free. Right. Well, I don't understand the green screen process. Do you have to have a special green screen camera for that? Or could I even with my iPhone or my Android uh, superimpose a background on a green screen recorded thing? With the green screen, all you need is to have a green screen. You can buy a green screen cloth for like 50 bucks. You can make your own green screen. You can paint the wall green. It's all in the editing. It's all in the software and the editing room. Sony Vegas, they have a Chrome keyer, and that allows you to uh, go into editing, and then you're behind a green screen or a blue screen or a red screen, whatever color it is, and it will take that backdrop out. So it's not really about the green screen or the camera. It's about the platform and the editing tools. Okay. And when you film these and I hate to ask this, but I really need to know, do you hit play and record and then walk over into the set and you know start, or do you have an aide, a producer sitting there helping you? Can these sort of great videos be done 100% by yourself, or does do you need someone to help? Most of the videos on my site that I do for my own commercial reasons, whether I'm doing video blogging and doing sales training tips, or book reviews when I'm actually in the video, it's all me. So I literally, I'll write the script, I'm the cameraman, I'm the talent, and I'm the editor. So I'm pre-post and repurposing that content video guy. And I'll talk a little bit about repurposing if you want to get to that, but and that's really key with getting your video seen. But So I actually film it, walk over, shoot it, and then I go back and edit it out. So I, I do that. Now, if I'm filming a subject and I'm working with a client, then I may have an aide. Okay. You made me think of that Eddie Murphy movie that came out, gosh, billions of years ago in the 80s. I don't know if you remember. I think it was Harlem Nights, where he was the producer, the director, the star. He wrote part of the music. And I remember sitting in the theater, and his name came up so many times in the credits that people started laughing at him. But no, <laughs> that's that, you, that though. Was a class that was a classic movie. I remember that too. You had a lot of good talent. You had Richard Pryor and yes. Red Fox. You had some 
Stella Reese. She had some dynamos in that that movie, but Eddie did his thing yeah. <laughs> on all levels. Well, you and I are really aging ourselves and showing the audience how old we are here with Red Fox references. So, <laughs> Doug, uh, the script, you mentioned that. Uh, talk to me about your scripting process. Do you try to memorize it? Do you make huge white card? I've actually done this, Doug. And tell me if this is the craziest thing you've ever heard. I've taken huge white poster board and posted them all the way around the camera with the camera in a hole in the middle so that I can remember all of the things I want to say. Uh, how do you remember? Do you memorize? And what are your scripting uh, tips you can share with us? Well, some of the things, I, I've done different levels. I've actually tried the teleprompter out, or I've put it in a program and I've tried to read. Now, for me personally, it looks like I'm reading. Right, yeah, <laughs> I think I would too. So I'm not as comfortable at that at this point, and I'm learning how to do that more so. But I know the content so well. I have talking points. I may write down a few things on a whiteboard or a couple sticky notes and use the uh, the poor man's teleprompter but just really knowing your content. And sometimes you want to come off engaging. I really think that when people do video, whether they're promoting their book or they're promoting their services, just to be authentic and have that conversational tone, you can talk about stuff that you know if you know your content and just having a couple of takeaways. So scripting is one thing. If you have to get word for word, then that just takes practice. And I don't think anyone cares if it's word for word, do you? No, I mean, it, unless, you know, you know, you're a major filmmaker and it has to be the right lines, of right. course. But yeah. outside of that, for business purposes, no, as long as you drive the point home and you come off engaging and coherent, you're, you're good to go. And what happens if you make a mistake? Say you're two minutes into a three-minute video and you slightly stumble over a word, but you fix it and keep going. Do you care about that? I, you know, when we misspeak here in the radio show, we leave it in because it's natural and normal. People actually stud, uh, blah, make mis blah, you know, do stuff like that, right? That's normal the way we actually operate. What are your thoughts? Do you, would you just stop and refilm? I, it, it depends. How about that answer? If you really stumble on something bad and you drop a le uh, a, a swear word you're not supposed to say, well, that's different. Perhaps yeah. then maybe then maybe you would go back and re-edit. Sometimes if you're if you mess up, you just repeat yourself and keep it going. It actually shows that you're you're a human. You're not a robot in a sense. Okay, I and keep it going. They have a little humor, self-facing. Yes. So it all depends on the magnitude of your mistake. Uh, with my videos, I have the power to walk over retake and retake 39 times if I need to, but sometimes I just let it roll. So it really depends, but there are cases when you definitely have to re-edit, and there's other cases where you just want to get it done. If you said your message, it's real, it's authentic, it's engaging. You maybe a blubbed up a word or two. I'm sure I've done that in this interview already, but you, you just keep it moving. And what about the length of the videos? Are you a two-minute man, or do you think that a nine-minute video is okay? What are your thoughts on length? You know, it all depends on the content. I think shorter is usually more compelling, more engaging, just the way our viewers are today, our audience. They want information. They want it fast and quick. I mean, essentially, you watch a video as opposed to maybe reading a book or reading a white paper. So shorter videos. Now, if it's an educational video, like a training video, and it's a wealth of content, well, that might be a case where you go maybe nine minutes or break it down into a video series. I've seen more of that now. For If you're doing a training or a consulting um, educational program, you may have ten topics to talk about. There may be ten short videos as opposed to having one hour-long video. So... It's kind of repurposing that content. And just the main thing is you've got to think about not what you're delivering, but what your audience wants. They're the ones that are going to determine by clicking away or staying tuned at, at your message. So think from their perspective. Would they be engaged for nine minutes of your content? All right. When you talk about using a video for sales purposes, can you elaborate on that? Is it are you trying to present information? Is it simply a search engine optimization trick to get found out there and then point people to your website? What are you using videos most effectively for in sales, please, Doug? Uh, both, 
both of those things you just said were pretty profound. One, from a search engine optimization to be found, to leverage that inbound marketing. Somebody watches your video about your products or services, they may be more inclined to pick up the phone or hit you with uh, an email or connect with you through social networking sites. So from an inbound marketing and being found through SEO, video is very powerful. The other thing about the sales process of video, video is a great tool to educate your customers and clients. So show them demos, show them training. If you're a consultant and you, you do a business model where you're teaching entrepreneurs how to get started, maybe have some training videos to educate potential clients about your program. So it's the educational reasons and to be found. So I'm looking at it both ways, inbound marketing as well as educational videos to uh, position yourself as a client of choice. Third, it's just a great communication tool to communicate globally through tools like Google Hangouts and videos where you can tell your message and not have to hop on an airplane to meet somebody face-to-face. -face. You can do it um, through uh, video cameras and, and, and web traffic. Yeah, I actually teach a class every Thursday night at a church in Arkansas through Google Hangouts, and it's been fantastic for us. Uh, we know that the class loves it and I love it because I don't have to leave home and yet I'm still making money in Arkansas every Thursday. So Hangouts is great. What about, my understanding is Hangouts automatically posts a movie for you. Is that true? What is the integration between YouTube and Google Hangouts? Well, that's a, that's a great question, Jim. Uh, it does automatically do a Hangout live on air to Google Hangouts. It will automatically upload to your YouTube channel, and then you have your video posted. So that, that does a couple of great things. Number one, you already have your content marketing on a video. You've done the interview. You've done the video show. Now you've got this sitting on your YouTube channel. So now if I didn't get a chance to go to your live Hangout while it's being recorded, now it's on your YouTube channel, so I can watch it any time of the day. I can watch it Sunday evening. I can watch it two months from now. As long as it's still on your YouTube channel, I can do that. So it's great to capture your content. And let's face it, people don't have the time to tune in live for events all the time, but repurposing content on demand at your leisure to watch video, that's powerful. And being able to share that video after it's done. So you, you just did your hangout. You did your training. You have it on your YouTube channel. Well, now I can share that on my website. I can share that on my LinkedIn or my social networking sites. It's just a great way to repurpose content after it's been done. So you can watch it again and again and again and reach a bigger audience. I think repurposing is, is one of the things that, as I like to say, let's put the social in your video. And by that, I mean socially engage people at their time. What about using my laptop camera? You know, so when I do the Google Hangout, it's with the built-in camera in my laptop. Is that okay? Is the quality good enough with that to actually post with my name on it, or am I going to be embarrassed by the quality? You know, it, it usually is okay. It comes down to this again, as I said in the beginning of the, the interview, is that it, it comes down to lighting. And there's a couple okay. tricks. If you're well lit, that camera's going to work fine, especially laptops today. I think, you know, if your laptop's not ordered in six years, I think you're going to be fine with, with the, the built-in webcam. You can buy portable webcams that are high-def related and, and all that, but the, the being able to light the subject and being able to have good audio makes up for everything. And, and a couple things you want to be aware of is what's in your background. Make sure your background, you know, is aesthetically pleasing. The other thing is make sure the camera on the webcam is eye level to your eyes. If you, put, if you bring it up higher or lower, you're going to have that quadruple chin effect. It's just not as appealing. So let's say you're sitting at your desk and you've got your laptop with your webcam. Maybe put your laptop on a stack of phone books. Yep. People still have phone books and raise that, that eye, that camera lens eye level. And that will, that will help set the, um, frame the uh, video. And what about video blogging? You know, it seems to me that you're losing some of the search engine optimization by not having a bunch of text. Do you think that you should transcribe the video and also add the text underneath the video? What are your thoughts on best practices for a video blog, please, Doug? Well, video blogging is what I, what I love, and, and that's what I do. I do a lot. And, uh, 
I always have text backing up the video. Uh, LinkedIn Publisher is a great way where you can do blogging, and I'll put a video up, but I have to have text up there because, quite frankly, some people don't click on the video. Some people just want to read, and if they read, watch my video at this link. So I think you you have to have the dual effect. You've got to have. I'm not from my own skill set. I'm not the best writer in the world. That's I rather do a video. However, there are benefits to having them both text and video complement each other. So I think it's it's important. It's important to have text backing up your video. Right. Not a, doesn't have to be a lot because you have it in the video. But you've got to have some direction of what's in the video. Uh, all uh, I want to let my audience know: I use SpeechPad.com for all my transcriptions. They charge a dollar a minute and usually produce the quality. Uh, it's almost perfect. I very rarely need to clean it up. And within four days, a dollar a minute, you can get a transcription. Uh, and I think that's a fantastic service. So I'll give them a free plug. I don't know much about LinkedIn Publisher. Please elaborate on what that is. Is that when you see someone's profile and then it says posts um, right there at the very top? I noticed that you have three video post right there. Is that from Publisher? That is from Publisher. What that is, is on your status update, you click on that little handwriting icon and it allows you to publish your own content. So I've got about 33 posts out there and they're all video blog posts. Now, and why would I want to do it on LinkedIn versus on my blog? It seems like I'm missing traffic to my blog by doing this. Well, it's two reasons. It, you're repurposing your content to another target audience. And the other thing is with LinkedIn, quite frankly, I'm getting more traction through my LinkedIn publishers, blog posts than I am on my website. Now, with that, is people will get notified if they're tuned in on LinkedIn that Jim Beach has just published an article. Doug Lehman has just published an article. It will, it will play nicely with your network. It gives them a, a notification that there's an article up there and then people can share and comment. The other thing is a workaround is if you publish a post on LinkedIn, you, within that post you can say, please, you know, put some verbiage to check out more information on my website or the other posts. I tend to not necessarily duplicate efforts, but I tend to make LinkedIn as an extension of my website uh, for my social platform. All right. And if I do put a video up on LinkedIn Publisher, do I upload the video to LinkedIn? Do I put it on YouTube and link to it? What's the actual process? The actual process is on Publisher, you just have to have the embed code of the video. So if it's on your YouTube channel or a Vimeo account or a other video hosting account, you have to have that embed code. You just cut and paste it, and it automatically populates on the post. So it's got to be hosted somewhere, but then you just, just put the embed code, and it will show up on the site. Okay, well, then that's, again, another example of the repurposing. It's on YouTube for, for people to find, but it's also driving traffic on LinkedIn, right? It, exactly, and that's the thing. The other thing about the repurposing with, with whether it's on YouTube, other social networking sites, we can get into all about social video, but the point is being able to engage with customers. There's a great dialogue on YouTube videos where you can make comments and suggestions and referrals and sharing. And that's the thing about the video that I want to drive home is it's one thing to have your video done, but with the real work comes into how are you sharing your video? How are you getting your audience engaged? Jim writes, if you do a great video about the service offerings that you provide, and I love it, I could share that through my network and somebody else could share that. So the power of sharing and engaging and, and commenting it, socially through video is powerful. Doug, other than going to DougLayman.net, how can we reach out, find your videos, learn from you, follow you on Twitter, and send you some smoke signals? Uh DougLayman.com is my main site. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's, that's quite all right. DougLayman.net is my visual CV resume site. So DougLayman.com, that's L-E-H-M-A-N.com, or you can put in, do a Google search and type in Atlanta Video Ambassador. Fantastic. Perfect. Doug, thank you so much for being with us today. Fantastic information, and I hope you'll come back soon. I enjoyed it, Jim. I look forward to uh, listening to more of your shows and following more about 
what you're doing in the start school for startups as well. Well, thank it's you great so much. Work that you provide. Thank you so much. We will be right back in just a second. So who is this Doug guy anyway? Doug is a sales, marketing, and training professional. Check out his website and Visual CV for more info. 